film highlighting the fight over higher education standards at UT and schools across the country is making its Austin debut this week. The deinvestment of higher education was occurring across the country. On one side, you have Bobby Jindal and a man named Grover Norquist. I offer people a taxpayer protection pledge. He came up with an idea to persuade politicians to sign a pledge that said that they would never vote to raise taxes. I will not raise your taxes. Grover Norquist is a grifter. He starved the government by reducing tax revenue. They're designing the system to fail. And joining us this morning is the director of the movie Starving the Beast, Steve Mims, also a UT professor. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So this, I have to admit, when I first um, saw the clips and read about this, I didn't realize this sort of battle was going on. Can mm -hmm. you explain what it is that's going on between governments, private sector, and the universities? Well, it's a 35-year history of very gradual defunding of public higher ed, for instance, at UT. In 1980, they got about 60% of their budget from the state. Now they get about 12%. Mm -hmm. So it shifted the, a lot of the burden over onto the students and their families. So mm -hmm. that's part of it, and it's led to an outcry for reform. And so it becomes a big philosophical battle between what public edu higher education started out as, as a public good, where we would invest a lot of money into it, and, 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 and from the beginning being pretty inefficient about that knowing that the return would come from people who came out and became engineers and doctors and were specialists in agriculture and then built out the country. And that's pretty much what happened from, from the Morrell Act in 1862 and from before that with Jefferson. And uh, that was the original philosophy. Now people look at it and they say like, well, that might have been okay for that time, but we live in a new era. There's all this technology. We can take advantage of a lot of efficiencies. We can do it better and we can do it cheaper and we, we should reform it, and that, that reform goes to the very core of the core ideas that, are, that make up universities. So the idea then is less government money, more private money uh, coming in. Recently there was an article on the 538 blog, which does a lot of analysis on this yeah. kind of stuff, that says that the reason tuition has gone up so much is because the government funding has gone down. But then when you look at a lot of these public universities, UT mm -hmm. in particular, has uh -huh. a $25 billion endowment. Right. In your opinion, is there maybe some responsibility on the universities to use some of that money to lower the cost well, for students? Well, by, I think by statute, they're limited in, t in terms of how they can spend uh, that money. Uh -huh. uh, there they're, they're are ways they can spend it, other ways that they can't. I think that there's always room for efficiency. I think that the people in our film say that, like we have Bill Powers in the film, I think he says um, that, that these universities are very entrepreneurial. They've had to be. Mm -hmm. They've had to find a way to outsource a lot of services. They've had to hire adjunct faculty they've had to like find clever ways and, and, and to, to raise money and they're never not raising money mm -hmm. uh, yeah. to make up the difference, I'm sorry. The battle really has, has kind of come down along political lines. Uh, left more on the side of government funding, right more on the side of private funding. Right. Do you think that you know, in the years since we've started to see you know, safe zones popping up on campus mm -hmm. and that, that has really kind of um, ruffled the feathers of people on the right and make it feel like maybe you know, conservative thoughts are not welcome on campus. Mm -hmm. Has that fueled this debate in what you found? Uh, well, there's a long history of people being concerned about what's being taught at universities, the ideas being shared, and that's part of what's in our film also, that there's a bit of that. I think it's primarily about funding, mm -hmm. primarily about a desire to make these institutions that, they, that are seen as grossly inefficient, mm -hmm. a lot more efficient, and to, to um, pay a lot less taxes for that. Uh, quickly, running short on time, the movie is called Starving the Beast. Where can people see it if they want to see it? You see it at the Violet Crown Cinema here in Austin as of Friday. It opens in Los Angeles, Madison, Wisconsin on Friday also. It is a very interesting topic. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Best Thank of luck with it.